In sports, the scoreboard doesn't tell the full story, but Netflix does. Stories about dads who happen to be world-class quarterbacks and a battle for the heart, soul, and direction of the multi-billion dollar business of F1. Whether you're a diehard fan or you're brand new, Netflix has the stories for every type of fan. You can watch these incredible sports stories like quarterback, F1 drive to survive, untold, and many more now on Netflix. Welcome to the Scala Supporters Pembrokeshire Podcast. Hello and welcome to a bonus podcast for this week where I talk to Daryl Morgan, head of the girls under 18s uh, setup for the Scarlet. Uh, that was a really nice guy. He's been in charge of the, the female kind of side of the, the game at the Scarlets for over 10 years now. Um, so I started off by asking him about the kind of coverage that the girls game is getting at the minute. Yeah, we've been trying to do stuff with girls for, for ages and trying to cover more and, and all of that. And just as they've been doing um, when the, the season started and we were doing the, the podcast, so we've been trying to follow it a little bit more. But, yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's there's not a lot of stuff covering. No, people. no, 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 no. It's it sort of we're a little bit in. It's uh, it's just it's only the last two years we've been part officially part of the academy, you know. So, yeah. so I've been doing it for I've been doing the under 18s for ten years. Um. So um. And when we had a senior women's team. Uh, you know, had that still been going, it would have been twelve years this year. Sort of like I got, uh, I was doing the seniors. I got, a, I was assistant with the seniors in twenty eleven. Took it over as head in twenty twenty twelve, and then it was like a natural progression, sort of to move away then to take over the under eighteen because because we were a WIU program then, so we were so we were run by the WIU community. Right. Playing under the Scarlet banner, you know, playing in Scarlet's kit, you know, so it was a little bit of a, of a hybrid sort of setup. So you, you were neither in one camp nor the other camp, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. so it was sort of like, um, but um, but yeah, the, well, post COVID, you know, we had some really good meetings with John, John Daniels, mm-hmm. you know, and um, so I'm post sort of, yeah, basically post COVID, we sort of like we, we went in with the academy. You know, proper then. So, so obviously you got the boy. If you look at the academy now, it's uh, it's a boys under sixteens, boys under eighteens, obviously. And now we've also got the girls uh, attached. So, uh, so everything all over post go through the academy now. So it's uh, yeah, it's getting there. Well, that's a, a massive improvement, really, isn't it? It's considering, yeah, yeah. Let's say ten years ago, it, it was just kind of getting going, really. So it's a yeah, of... yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, I sort of. It was going before me because we used to have under fifteens as well, mm. uh, that, but that was before I started. You know, it was sort of like maybe a year or two before I started with the with the under eighteens. Mm. And um, but like I say, it, it was just a natural progression because what we didn't really have, we didn't really, even though we had a uh, an under eighteens and a and a, and a senior set, and there was no sort of coordination between the two, so we didn't do. As head coach of the seniors back then, I didn't really know who was coming through. So, mm. and um, the, the guy called Jeff Roach, he was the WIU regional manager at the time. We, we sat down myself, Jeff, and Kev George, and, and it just seemed a natural sort of. Well, if I'm doing that, because we play, we uh, we operate in blocks, it's not like a season long thing. And so, uh, but the, obviously the senior block was running at a different time the under eighteen, so it just became it was just a natural progression. Then that I went, I took over the under eighteens, and then it, it just sort of like you had that natural, and you knew exactly who was coming through. Mm-hmm. You knew you knew they'd been coached, you know, properly as well. So so it was sort of like so it was a seamless transition for them into into the senior setup then. And most importantly, you know who the chopsy ones are then as well when they come through. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, going be, I'm going to be careful now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's like you say. You you get to know the girls when they come in through. 
you know how they're interacting. Like I say, you know, we when we when we had the seniors, you know, the amount of internationals we had in there, and you had to sort of like you had to understand the dynamic of when they were coming in that they were coming into a performance dynamic, you know. Yeah. Um, well, you know, and um, and yeah, it, it was it was really useful. Well, it must have worked. We won we won uh, quite a few championships in that initial sort of years, like you know, because you were just having that. Girls are coming in and they they knew the principles that we were playing to. They knew what we stood for. Mm. The under 18s girls now knew what we stood for. You know, they obviously knew the senior players because the senior players were role models. You know, and mm. and it just just it, it just it was just a natural sort of progression. So, how is it working this season then? With you know, I haven't seen any um, Scarlet's ladies senior team. So far, yeah, there's no senior team at the moment, so um, right, a little bit. Um, it, it, it happened pre COVID. I think, I think the last time we played, I'm gonna probably get this wrong, but I think the last time we played uh, a senior fixture was probably 2019, could have even been 2018. Um, a lot of girls were uh, a director, well, the, the in um, uh, the RFU set up the Allianz Premiership, which was mm. basically uh. 10 team league in England, which was virtually semi pro, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of the girls were signposted over there. Uh, on top of that, COVID came as well. It was sort of, you, you know, you know, horrendous. And it just never, never sort of came back up. And, and our, our, you know, our, uh, our star players, our quality players, if you like, most, well, 95% of them ended up playing in England because during COVID, we, you, you know, the Allianz kept playing. Yeah. And so they needed yeah. some form of rugby to prepare them because the Six Nations kept going, you know, and so uh, yeah. and so that's where we are. At the moment, we, we're just running an under-18s programme. Right. You know, so... Um, so that's so, where... So how has the 18s been going so far? I've seen three, three games, one win against the Ospreys, which is key. Yeah. Which is vital. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was on all day, so I missed that. <laughs> um, and then one draw and one loss. But how how's it going so far this season? Yeah, it's really, really good. You know, it's it sort of um, like say we came in last week. Since last year, we virtually had to rebuild the program because I, I think what people don't you know don't realize is that um, you know these these girls lost the best part of three years rugby. Mm. During you know during during COVID during you know and the subsequent you know the first lockdown and the subsequent lockdown they lost the best part of three years rugby and it was almost like going back to you know back to back to stage one if you like you know so so last year was a bit of a challenge you know we didn't play full fixtures we played festival format so the girls didn't really have the opportunity to you know we trained well but but they didn't have that opportunity game time to to stand up whereas this year. It's it's more you know we're playing proper fixtures now, um, but but we'd almost started from scratch. Obviously, the great thing now is what what would happen in the past. You, you would always have that continuation of you know you'd have players coming in, they'd get they'd go to their third year, but then there'd be players coming in under so you'd have that you'd have that for one of a better word conveyor belt. So yeah. Players, yeah. So we're getting back to that now because the girls came in last year and he was. It was strange for them, strange for us, you know, and um you know, but this year, you know, the the programme has been been a lot better, a, little, a lot more cohesive, you know. Um I will I will link up. Obviously it was different for me as well, coming in under the Academy umbrella, you know, so so we're getting more um coming in under the uh, academy umbrella. So you know, I'm getting used to the use of the way things work, even though you you were associated with the, the academy in the past. And um, yeah, it's a lot better this year. You know, it's sort of, uh, and, and you can see that, like the year 11s that we brought in this year, you can instantly see, you know, that yeah, next year is going to be better. The year after is going to be better, and the year after is going to be better, and we'll get back to to where we were, sort of like in in 2018. You know, so. Um, hmm. But yeah, yeah. But as a group, they're they're that's superb. They're really good. You know, they just so, want to learn. Okay, so a lot of people won't really know. 
you know, how much time the girls do spend training and what the system is and, and things like that. So for for somebody who's in the under 18s at the minute, what's the kind of the training program with you and then outside and, and things like that? Yeah, with us at the moment, you sort of um we train on a Friday night in the bar. Um sometimes we go out to uh, obviously if the guy if the men are playing at home, you know, the bar and set up for the for the supporters village. So so then we, we do sort of we we, we got a good link in with uh Sandavery College. Yeah, we we still build in them them sort of like um them connections with the training. So the girls train for two hours a week, you know, they also have uh, programs that go away with a lot of feedback where we hope that they do it. Um, on their own. Um, games wise, it's sort of like so. We came in, we started our selection process probably um, the beginning of October, middle beginning to the middle of October. Uh, picked our squad then, uh, sort of a couple of weeks into November, and then that, that that squad then trained right up to to Christmas. Had a little break over Christmas and then came back in. Uh, like you say, we started our our, our competition phase, sort of. Um, um, late January, you know. So, um, so we played the Ospreys. Yep, yeah, that was a good win. You know, uh, did make hard work of it in the end, but it should have been a lot more comfortable than what it was. Uh, we had a tough time up in uh, up in RGC. You know, we what they tend to do with the girls is play a lot of double headers. So, so we actually, um, to a lot of people, this might sound a bit strange, but we actually travelled to RGC to play the Dragons. Yeah, you know, and the, you, you know the Dragons are sort of. With their academy and a little bit further along on the road than us, but not much. You know, we were catching them up, and you know, I'm confident that we'll catch them up and take them over with, over the next year. Mm. Uh, and we played RGC on the on the weekend, which was despite like a five a five all scoreline. You think oh, what a dreadful game, but it, but it was actually it was end to end. You know, and uh, and it was uh, you know the girls really stood up well. You know, and we had created plenty of opportunities. To win it, just just that just that last pass or that uh, mm. you know the odd decision going the wrong, making that you know they're under pressure and. But that's the difference with it now, isn't it? Is when they play in, you know, that's almost what they need to move them on to the the next oh, level. Exactly, yeah. They need to play under the pressure. Yeah, yeah. They need to play the good games, and you need to be on a pitch where you know everybody on on the opposite. There's no weak. Link yeah, to run yeah, that sort yeah, of thing, yeah. isn't it? So it's a good thing. Yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we got we got a we've got a final fixture um, Sunday now up in the where we mm-hmm. got Cardiff. So um, um, yeah, we 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 trained really well. Trained really well last uh, Friday. So we're back in again uh, this week now, and then obviously um But yeah, we we've had. Um, and then the girls then will get uh, after Friday they they'll they'll hopefully we'll we'll get a decent number in the Wales uh, under 18s selection. Mm-hmm. So um but yeah, yeah. So two questions. One on Astrid Munnach. Have you yeah. ever been to Astrid Munnach and it's not freezing cold? Uh, no, never. Yeah, that's no. it's not. No, I had a feeling no. it was just me. I've been up there a no, couple no. of times we, in the we summer. We played a game up there last summer. We we played a one-off game uh, against the Dragons up there last summer. And it was just as cold as uh, <laughs> I was up there with the, the boys' academy uh, yeah. last week, and you're just sitting there and you're going like, it, it shouldn't be this cold. The car said, you know, I got out the car and the car said it was fine, you know, and I'm sat yeah, here yeah, with yeah, two yeah, coats yeah. and shivering. Yeah, yeah. The, big, the big mistake I decided, I decided to sort of like because uh, I wanted to let uh, because it was a, uh, a standalone game, I wanted to let a couple of the other coaches sort of lead pitch side. Because I got mm-hmm. I got a habit of being a bit of a control freak, <laughs> so I so I decided to stand on the stand side if you know Western Man yeah, yeah. in the shade and it was even colder in there. I, guess. <laughs> <laughs> I I reckon that the little hot dog place and the tea and coffee yeah. place they that must okay. be the most profitable shop in the whole of Western Man. Got to be. Gotta be. Gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, to answer your question, no, it's always cold. <laughs> It's always cold, it's always windy. Yeah. So after this weekend then, and you say about the girls going on to, you know, selection for, for Wales and what have you, what happens to the girls that don't make it to into the Wales squad? Because that's a long time to be kind of... Yeah, exactly. Playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it sort of... Um, um, so so basically, we, we, we'll play on Friday and we'll... Uh, sorry, not Friday, sorry. 
we'll play on Sunday. Sunday. We'll have a couple of couple of weeks then because we need to review the program ourselves. So we need to sit down. I need to sit down with with the other coaches that are involved, review the program. Then what we'll do then is we'll bring. It'll probably we'll bring in um, you know a group of players, but it'll be the group of players in preparation for next year. Mm-hmm. Sort of uh, because uh, the girls in year thirteen now will obviously go on to senior rugby. So so if they're eighteen, they can go and play senior rugby now. And so we will bring a group in then, and and it'll it'll be purely skill focused. So we we'll meet them a couple of times a month, you know. Um, a couple of times a week, a couple of times a month, and it sounds a bit complicated. So, so maybe like um, the second and fourth week of the month, we will bring them in. But it'll be purely. It is a bit of a challenge because a lot of the time with the girls, they just want to play. Yeah. You know. So, but but you, you've got. We, we need to a few things we've identified throughout the program, and and certainly in the games is is our skills under pressure, you know, our, uh, and, and our fundamental skills, you know, it's sort of, um, is getting them. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring them down and really sort of like pull it right back to base six, you know, in the catch pass and then rebuild it back up through through the spring and summer ready for next year then. And then obviously we'll also have another cohort which will try trial then sort of um, probably uh, around about September next year. So, um, so yeah. So we're conscious um, that we don't want to lose them. It's, it, 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 it's, um, you know, same with the boys. You know, sixteen to eighteen is a challenging time. There's a lot of, lot of distractions, a lot of things going on. So we want to keep them, keep them focused. You know, unfortunately, there's not a lot of um, hub rugby going on. You know, mm. um, hubs, is, well, hubs rather have been struggling for numbers. So. So we need to sort of like make sure that we don't. In the past, we've had a sort of like, um, best way to describe it is like a start again sort of scenario cycle. So every yeah. time you come back in in September, you you're back to point A. But we need to progress beyond that now. That 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 the only girls at point A are the new girls into the squad. If you know what I mean, mm-hmm. you know. But then if we can get our 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 current year 11s and year 12s would be our year. 12s and 13s next season to a skill level, they can actually help with the coaching process, you mm. know, in in sort of bringing and mentoring and girls on as well. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's the plan going going forward. And also get them on, um, you know, uh, a conditioning program. You know, it's one of the challenges we've had this year is sort of despite all the best efforts of the um, of the of the of the guys in the academy and uh, and in the scouts is finding. Sort of like an effective gym for the girls, where the girls can can go in there. You know, we have in the past used uh, private gyms, uh, not private gyms, sort of uh, commercial gyms. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but it's not ideal for the girls. You, you think that there's some girls sixteen, there, it's up to eighteen, and so to be in the commercial gym, sort of with 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 customers, if you like, then then it, it's mm. it's not the best sort of um, training environment, but. Uh, but we've got plans to put, so so hopefully that uh, that'll be sorted in the next uh, next few weeks. So then, when we bring that group back in, there'll also be then uh, gym sessions as well. You know, mm-hmm. and just basic stuff, teaching them how to lift properly. You know, teaching them, you know, functional movements to make sure that they we're almost like trying to prevent injuries before they happen. If you know what I mean, you know. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so that's the plan going forward. And it it is difficult with girls because you've got such a wide range of abilities with because not so many girls are playing, isn't it? You, you've got yeah, a yeah, wide yeah. range of abilities. So you've got to try and stretch your program between like some girls yeah, have never lifted quite weights. Sort before. of, um, you know, we quite um, how can I how can I put it? it it's sort of um, we're quite challenging in, in in what we deliver. We make sure nobody gets left behind. Hmm. You know, but at the same time, we, we strive to push them forward. Mm. Um, the great thing about girls, girls coaching, and and, and uh, I don't know, people out there, you, you know, sort of uh, coach coach women and, and girls in uh, in other sports or in rugby, even is they just want to learn. They're, they're like sponges. Yeah. And, and the thing, you know, I've I've coached Division One men, and um, I've coached Academy age as well, boys, and and. You do, you often come across with they think they know it all, whereas <laughs> with the girls, 
you know, they 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 just want to learn. Most of them are sort of, you know, we talk about rugby education. You know, you you think of your average eighteen year old boy. He probably started playing rugby when he when he was when he was, when he was eight years old, maybe. You know, for his local club or junior section, whatever. You know, your average girl. You know, in in even in our squad, probably started playing when she was thirteen or fourteen. You know, yeah. some, some maybe sixteen, just because their mates were playing it. You know, and sort of something to do. You know, so so they don't have the when I say rugby education, they don't they don't have the rugby experience of mm. of of your your average boy. So so it's. It's got its advantages and disadvantages. The advantages is you can sort of like, you don't have any bad, bad habits that you have to change. So as long as they're coached and shown properly, then mm. they get it pretty quickly. Um, the downside is when, when you play in a game, sort of like they don't have that game match mm. experience, you know, to understand when to pass, when to carry. Mm. You know, I always you, used to find... So- so I used to coach um, like juniors and we'd have like, I, I was quite lucky. I had a couple of girls in my yeah. section who were probably better than the boys. And, yeah, and yeah. one of my girls who was a prop was, was my enforcer. So if anybody wasn't listening when, when I was talking, she'd kind of give them a slap, like, you know, yeah, but it um, it, you look, <laughs> you kind of love those ones, yeah. but I always found they just had a lot of enthusiasm for the game. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. there wasn't the, um, Sometimes to the boys, it's going to be, you know, I'm the next Shane Williams or, or, or I'm yeah, the next, yeah, yeah. that sort of a thing. And it's all uh, look at me. And I always just, the girls just used to love playing. They used to love the fact that they could just run with a ball and just, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's a pleasure to coach. It's a pleasure to watch. It's a pleasure to coach when they, they're enjoying the game. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. It was sort of, um, yeah, you know, what I've always picked up on when, you know, coaching the seniors, coaching is the amount of them that the play with a smile on their face. Mm. You know, like you say, they 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 just they just enjoying it. They're out there enjoying it. They were their mates. You know, they're enjoying it. Um, you know, you call it, I've I've coached not always, but I've coached men, and sometimes you look at men play, they look like the they got the world on their shoulder. You know, <laughs> yeah. and and it's sort of like you know, whereas if they actually chilled a bit, you, you know, they'd be better for it. Yeah. You know. Mm. It's sort of, uh, but with with the girls, it's sort of, and we, we, you know, we encourage the the right environment as well that they do enjoy. You know, we we don't put pressure on them. There's no pressure on results at all. You, you know, a win for us is, is is a win for us is actually a girl that comes into the program can't catch a ball when she leaves the program. She can catch and can pass off both hands. You, yep. you know, that's a win. You mm. know, it's sort of um, because we know that she'll come back next year and she'll go on to a different level. You know. Um, uh, you know, a win for us is, is, is you know, the top end win is, is getting the girl in the Welsh squad, you know, mm. because, you know, we've had, we've been fortunate some of the players, the, you know, Jasmine came, Jasmine Joyce came through our programme, you know, Jazz sort of, I started coaching Jazz in 20, 2013, you know, and yeah, she, she was okay, you know, didn't play mm. the first game I coached, played the second game, but, but she had such a joy for the game and such a desire to learn and such a work ethic, you know, that, that you look at her now and she's like stratospheric, like, you know, yeah. you talk to the girls about, you know, coaching and they, you can just see, you're saying about the boys having that sort of, that sort of, I want to be the next Shane Williams. You're actually getting girls that wanted to be the next Jazz Joyce Definitely. or being the next Hannah Jones or, you know, the next Fionn Lewis, the next Alex Callender, you know, and all those girls came through our program, you know, and it's sort of, you know, we had Alicia Butcher in with us about um, maybe about a month ago, mm. you know, and Alicia just sat down and she was sort of like, oh, do you want me to come in the coach? Do you want me to come in? I said, I'd, I'd just come in and have a chat with the girls. And, he, you know, they, they hardly listened to me, but but they, they, they <laughs> took in every single word that the that Alicia, and, and having those players, you know, that are Scarlet players, even though they might be playing over the bridge at the moment, and mm. they, they, you know, their heart and soul sort of scars players. Mm. But they, they, they uh, what you try to tell the girls that are in the program now is sort of like they were sitting where you were, you know, mm. ten years ago. They, they, they were there. They were sat there. Yeah, they were sat yeah. there, and you see, see where they are now, you mm. know. And it's sort of like um, I went up to uh, Cardiff on on Saturday to watch the um, um, the. 
the Celtic Challenge Development 15, which which is a new concept this year. And it was, you know, Jenna De Vera was there. She was our co-captain last year under 18s, and she's playing on that stage you now, which is one stage down from national squad. Mm. You know, you suddenly look in and you think, you, you know, Jenna's a super talented player, you know, and a great person. But she's also worked hard, you know, and you sort of. Um, I think I think the girls don't realise that it's that it it isn't that far away, you know. With with boys, it's a long way away unless unless you're, you know, um, unless you're super talented, you know, and then you have the like the right breaks, you know. Yeah. But the girls, is... it is within touching distance, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think the thing I like about Jazz Joyce is. Um, you know, St. David's Rugby Club has just started its own women's team. I think they played yeah. um, a couple of weeks ago, their first game. Ago, yeah, and yeah. that's pretty much all entirely down to Jazz Joyce. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah. In, it's one of the smallest places in Pembrokeshire. <laughs> you know, let, let in, in the UK, isn't yeah. it? You know? But it's got its own women's rugby team, you know. And yeah, they were only... Yeah. Three or three or four, I think in Harford West, Pembroke. I yeah, think. you got you got Harford West, Pembroke. Uh, there's a new one set up uh, in uh, Newcastle Emlyn. Um, mm-hmm. So you got Newcastle Emlyn, you got Whitland, uh, we can, um, down to you got Burryport. Uh, you got Lampeter. I've got to make sure I don't miss anyone now. <laughs> you started now. You've got to get them right, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you got Tumble. You know, um, yeah. So, so yeah, you, it, 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 it's it's strange. Like there, there are plenty when they get the seniors. There, there are enough places for them to go on geographically. You know, because mm. one of the challenges we've obviously had is geography. Like you know, you know yeah. if you're if you're in uh, in Australia, like you know, you know, you, you, <laughs> it's only down the road. Like you know, you know, but but if you're in the Scarlet region, we we got girls. We got I think we got two girls traveling down from other mm. right faith, never missed a session. You know, the, the, and the, the you know, but people don't realise that that uh, the Maria now her dad will bring her down. Goodness knows what time they leave be, because they're one of the first people there. In well, she's one of the first players there in training. Yeah, you know, yeah. she comes down, she trains for a couple of hours, drives back to Aberystwyth. You, you know, and it's it's a massive commitment to. Um... They say it's it's the girl, and then it's the family around it, and yeah, it's exactly. that whole environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Then, that's kind of the uh, my next question. Really, is kind of how what is the state of the 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 girls' game? Because I know it's. I say I used to coach when you know at the, at the age when they were all mixed in, and that's you see still quite a lot of girls' boys' teams kind of playing at that age. Yeah. And then when they get to that age when they separate, it becomes a little bit more challenging for the girls to kind of find a team and somewhere to play and commitment. So how what is the state of the game kind of from? Um, it obviously took a big knock. Like, like Even the boys' game took a big knock with... Um... With with COVID and the lockdowns and you know, but it's working its way back there. You, you know what the girls are, what they brought in. Um, uh, I'm trying to think when it was probably probably 2018, 2017, 20. They brought in hubs, so so they are geogra- geographically sort of um, trying to explain. It's like a junior section for girls, just like a boys' junior section, but 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 purely for girls. But then. Like in this area now, we go one in Armonford. Uh, I live in T Cross. There's one. There's one in Armonford. Uh, there's one in Tumble. Um, there's one in Connerley. So geographically, there is a place for the girls to go. You know, um, it's not it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but at least they've got somewhere to go. When I came in, like you say, you know, they play mixed rugby up till thirteen, and then then they were sort of like. Well, that's it. A big gap then, isn't it? Massive gap, yeah, yeah. And there was only a couple of places where they could go and play. You know, maybe Whitland, maybe uh, maybe Kamal and Quinns had a had a team. You know, and and have Hood have Hood West had a team, but there wasn't much more other than that. So, so the hubs now, like you look look down Pembroke, you're going in Tenby, you're going in uh, in Halford West itself. You know, you're going in um, in Ceredigion, you're going in uh, Aberdeen. You know, mm-hmm. so so you so. You, it is sort of the opportunities. That, the problem we got is numbers. 
mm. you know, for each one of them to get the junior, the junior levels, talking to people who are involved in the hubs, the numbers of junior levels are phenomenal. Absolutely mm. brilliant, you know. But it's when you get to, you know, that, you know, I think 16s is pretty good, you know. Um, but, but at 18, there is a, there is a drop off. I mean, and it's, it's keeping them girls engaged in, in the game, you know. And, you know, with, with the WIU, the pathway, you know, when I when I came in, you, you literally play for us, play for the Welsh team. If you didn't play for the Welsh team, you, you play club, play for us, play for the Welsh team. That was it. Hmm. There, there was no under-20s. There was, there was no under-18s, you know. Um, so it would, you would literally sort of play Scarlet's so, Against Cardiff on uh, on uh, on a Sunday, and then maybe in three weeks time you could be you could be rocking up against England. You, you know, who's, mm. you know. I'm, but now the pathway is starting to be created. There, if you, last year we had a we had a Welsh under 18s We had quite we had about um, I think we had about seven girls in the squad. You know, so we had a Welsh under 18s The first time they've ever done that. You know, mm-hmm. um, so the 18s are there this year. They've also got the 20s um, running. It's all centrally run at the moment, just because of numbers. You know, so yeah. the hope with us is that it, that it'll it'll expand as the numbers and and the girls see that right. Okay, you know, I can pick a ball up at at seven, and I can play uh, play through my hub, and then you know go play for the Scarlets at 16. You know, go play Wales at 18. You know. Where we'd like you to be, then go play Scarlet or, you know, under twenties, and then not play Welsh under twenties, and then play Welsh international. You know, it's sort of um, mm. so the pathway is that you know there's there's a long way, there's still a long way to go, but there are opportunities for there are more opportunities for the girls to play now mm. than there have been in the past. You know, um, it's still it's not not ideal, but. You know, it's just like the boys' game. You know, the numbers, um, the numbers are there, but but it's it's just getting them engaged. Yeah, I think that that's kind of where families and the support network kind of come into it. Where you know, even with boys, men playing rugby, everybody goes through that bit of going. You know, oh, I'm not sure if I want to go this year. It's, it's it's raining. Yeah. I'm I'm tired. I've got exams next week. I've yeah, got yeah. Uh, you know all these other different things, and it's really yeah. easy to kind of go. I'll skip this one. And it, if if you've got somebody around you that's kind of going, actually, yeah, come on, you you you're yeah. doing really well. I'm going to take you sort of a thing. And and I th- I see that starting to develop a lot more with the girls now. Yeah, say, yeah, 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 yeah. A couple of years the, the, ago, the parents. Was, the parents mm. across the board, you know, you, you are, you know, they're brilliant with us. They, they, they really are. And, and to be honest with you, and it's not just us, it's, it's, it's every region, it, it's every hub, it's every, every club side, you know, without, without the parents sort of support, then, then, you know, we certainly wouldn't have a regional program, you know, because, uh, but, um, you know, they come down. The great, the great thing with us is, you know, we have, we've got, we've got a squad of, uh, 33 at the moment. And, uh, we have thirty training minimum every week. You know, the it's sort of you get the odd one that's got to work because at the end of the day, yeah, they, <laughs> you need they a little do bit, what they got to do. Need yeah. a little bit of, bit of money as well. You know, the odd one will sort of like, you know, we we got girls coming from Harpery back to train. You know, and yeah. so so sometimes you know there was a couple of weeks ago she was um, she was coming back. Um, and uh, she couldn't get a train because of the train strike. Yeah, you know, but but but, but then it's sort of like you, you're having no message after message saying, you know, I'll just try and get the next one. And in the end, <laughs> it looks it looked like, you know, you know, don't worry about it. Like, yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you catch up. But uh, but yeah, no, with, without the parents, I and mean, it's always been the same. You know, it's sort of um, you know, there there is there is much a part of the of you know not that much a part of it as as the girls are. You know, because mm. without their support and, you know, and, and I mean that in sort of like not just bringing them to training and bringing them to games or whatever, just just being there for them. You know, sometimes it's easier. You know, one, one of the one of the one of the one of the challenges with with girls is, is giving feedback. You know, but you got to give honest feedback. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so so sometimes it, it it's it's handy having a parent there as well. You know, when you're telling them because there's no point. You, you know, if somebody needs to work on the kicking game, you need to tell them, look, you've got to work on your kicking game. If somebody needs to sort of um, work on their on the on their physical side of it, you, you you know, then it's easier to have a parent there because all you're doing when you're giving feedback is if one. You know, picking on them, you you wanted to make them better. Yeah, it's to make them better players. You know, and it's sort of, and you know, having the parents there in that support role as well. They, they, you know, more often than not, they they sort of like like okay, you know what you need to do now, and you can hear them when they're leaving. You know what you need to do now. Yeah, you know, and they, and they sort of because because we, we're not you you know the Welsh women are professional now, like but but but. But you know you, you'll never get a professional under 18s you know uh, girls side but they still need that so you need that link with the parents if you know what I mean and it's it's about developing the mentality isn't it at that yeah, particularly yeah, yeah, yeah. in that, that younger age and that's that is where yeah, you yeah, need yeah. parents around and you know it wasn't that long ago with girls weren't playing in any great numbers and if you if you only had three girls i got two boys and a yeah. girl but if you if you only had three girls and you were a big rugby fan then the opportunity for your girls went there and and now you have got that opportunity to get involved in that you stay involved in the game yeah, with your yeah. Girls, don't you? you know it's 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 yeah, i yeah. i think it's in the best kind of it's not in a great position like like you say you know there's been a lot of challenges but in terms of opportunities if you look back at the way it was a couple of years ago, you know, the opportunities are growing. So, so let's round it up then. What would you say to anyone now who's kind of thinking, should my little girl be playing rugby? Oh, definitely. You, 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 you're you pretty biased, like, you know, <laughs> because obviously you're a rugby coach and I, 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 I don't want anyone playing netball. I don't want anyone playing hockey, you know, football, and then they should all be playing rugby. You know, mm-hmm. because it, it, you know, we, we don't, we don't, you, you know, one of the things probably I haven't said is, is we make it clear that it's a performance program, you know, mm-hmm. and it, it, as part of a performance program, everything you expect from a performance program, the girls get, you, you, you know, the, the feedback. Um, we make it clear to them at the start, you know, that, that, um, that, um, you know what we expect of them, and vice versa, what they can expect from us as well. You know, it's sort of it's a collaboration. At the end of the day, you sort of like you, you get in, and that's where you know, particularly you know, I can't talk about hubs. I don't know how hubs run their games. Each, each have their own sort of um, their own localized DNA, if you want. You know, for one of a bit. You know, but I, but I can talk about how we we run it. You know, the girls that come into our program into our our program are just sort of like we think of them as if you know, you know they're not just players you know you bring them through you know when they're with us you're almost like I don't want to say nurturing but, but you're almost sort of like when they're with us they're like your girls for two hours you know or whatever however the, the session yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but on the flip side of that it's sort of um, you know the environment wise we just try to make it fun. Do you know what I mean? Mm. With 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 a performance edge, you know. But we we just make it, try to make it fun because I'm a great believer in that if you're enjoying doing something, then then you you you'll do it better. Yeah. You know, if if you if you're struggling to do something, and go and yeah, they, they they struggle. They have they have different struggles to what boys have. You know, and we're there to support them as well. You you know, there's there's a lot of program. The way we talk about, you know, obviously, you know, you've got to have the mindset of coaching coaching girls that they're not small men, mm. you know, and yeah. that's, that's one of the sort of like, I think some people sort of try to coach them like they're men, but 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 they're not men, you know, they're not they're yeah, not yeah. small men, they they are they're women, they're physiologically different to us as, mm. as men, and so it's sort of, um, but. Um, but yeah, no, you know, we, we, we it's sort of I'm trying to think, trying to think of the words, you know, it's sort of, uh, but it's um, 
you know, I, I think, I think uh, Wayne Smith uh, said it. The well, ex All Blacks, but Black Ferns coach, you know, sort of uh, it, it epitomizes it. Uh, you know, um, women have to feel good to play rugby. Yeah, play rugby well. Men play rugby to feel good. <laughs> to feel good. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and it's sort of like it's only a short thing, but it is quite. It's true. Quite telling yeah. about about where they're at. You know, you, you yeah. know, you go along. To, that was with you and uh, you and Cunningham uh, at the weekend, you know, and like you were saying, you know, if, if a girl wants to wear uh, do a hair, then do a hair. That's part of part, part of it. Part of it, you, you know. It's sort of she wants to wear fake tan. She wakes for you. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, but but from my point of view, why would a girl want to play? Why would we? It's a camaraderie. It's it's learning skills. It's life skills as well as as rugby skills. You know, mm. it's. It's it's challenging, and I think sometimes, you know, we we too scared to challenge the girls. If you know what I mean, it's sort of. Um, but 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 in reality, they want to be challenged. They want to be they want to be pushed. They want to be, you know. Um, um, from our point of view, you know, I think it's the best program around. We could be better, you know. No, I'm not going to say you said everything's perfect, you know, and. You know they know that the, the my thoughts on it. You know, but um, but yeah, no, I'm trying to think. Huh? <laughs> Probably got it. Like, yeah. So Sunday then it's uh, uh, you're up in Ashford Manor and everybody's got their hats on and about four coats and yeah. three cups of coffee and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, what can parents expect from? Um, okay, so parents normally go to the game anyway. Yeah. So yeah. let's look at why should the aunties, the uncles, the grannies, yeah. the the neighbours, and everybody, why should everybody come and see that game on Sunday? I, I'll be honest with you. I think one of one of the most telling things. Okay, was back when I was coaching when we had the senior team. You know, we played a game up in Sandavery, and. I don't know what people thought. What you know, there was there was there was obviously a lot of people there that hadn't seen a women's game before. You know, they'd seen it live. They've seen bits and pieces on TV, and you can, and they they probably sort of like sitting in their armchairs and you know, best coaches in the world. You know, best yeah. armchair coaches in the world. But we we had there was there was there was a group of guys actually behind me, and um, and the girls are coming on, and you can imagine the sort of comments that were coming from them. And then about fifteen twenty minutes into the game, one one of the one of one of the blokes uh, behind me turned around and said, "No, oh, it's pretty good." And, and their their perception, see, women's rugby is good to watch. Yeah, you know it's not a massive kicking game. You know, yeah, we kick, but we tend to kick tactically as opposed to ping pong. Yeah, you know, the collisions, the collision, yeah, there's collisions. You know, we got some dynamic, strong runners. But also, you know, we play a fast open game. We, we there's a lot of offloads. The skill level with the girls is what you know surprises most people because they they just so I if people wanted to come and watch a game, I, I I would tell anybody out there that has you know forget about your preconceived ideas of what what you think women's rugby and girls rugby is about. Actually, just just go and watch a game, hmm. but go open minded, and you'll be surprised how much you enjoy it. You know, yeah. I, I've I've coached men, I've coached boys, you know, I've coached women and I've coached girls and, and I and I'd be honest with you, um the gear the women's game can be a far more exciting game because there's a lot more running, there's a lot more passing, you know. Mm-hmm. It's hits, you know, and, and it's it's some of them are quite sort of like, you know, even make me cringe. Like you think, ooh <laughs> <that's what> <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um but yeah, yeah, but but I, but but I I I challenge anyone out there to to go and not come away, you, you know. Don't go there blinkered. Go there with an open mind, and, and you you'll come away yeah, and you'll enjoy be surprised it. At, at what you're seeing. Yeah. You know, I think one of our objectives over the next couple of seasons is to get more games under our belt to create those opportunities for people to come and see them. You know, mm. you know, you, you get. Um, the academy will post something on on the social media, and, you, and you'll get you'll get hundreds of likes. Like you know, instead of liking, just pop along. Like you know, you know what I mean? It's easy to sit there and push a button, but but you'll probably get far more out of it 
actually I somebody watch the game and you'd be shocked how good some of these girls are. Yeah. You know, so a... what time is kickoff on, on Sunday then at Astro? Uh, okay, I've got to get this right. Uh... <laughs> 1 p.m. 1 p.m. We We're first up. We're first up. <laughs> so it's uh, Scarlett and Cardiff, first of all, and then... Yeah, Scarlett it's... and Cardiff, first of all. I think, I think Cardiff have more or less secured it. They've had a they've had a decent run, you know. Obviously, didn't play us early doors, did they? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, um, so yeah. So that's so then it's um, um, it is the uh, Ospreys against the uh, Dragons. Oh, but but I think I think uh, I think Cardiff are pretty, pretty they're more or less secure with it. Secure with it. I think they secure. They beat the Ospreys last weekend, and I think that Can't with us only drawing, I think mm-hmm. that. Close any opportunities that we have, but but like I say, you know, from my point of view, I guess seven, eight, nine girls in our Welsh squad is a massive win for me. You know, yeah. so, um, you know, we we get girls eager to come back. Another big win, you know, sort of, and even down to the girl that, that's just come in, if she can come in, not being able to catch a ball properly, or, or maybe being able to catch but not distribute, and she leaves at the end of the program, can pass off both hands. Can catch, win, you know, mm. big win. You know, and those are the bigger wins. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of yeah. getting out of that perception of it being all about the scoreboard. When we're on, the scoreboard's important, especially but, when you're uh, playing the Ospreys. Especially when you're playing the Ospreys. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but, 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 it's important, but, but it's you look for different. You look for wins in different areas, and you yeah. know, and, and as we progress, and as we as we get more integrated within the academy. You know the program's just going to get better and better and better. They go from strength to strength. The girls are going to get better. They're going to get fitter. They're going to get stronger. You know, they get their skill level. You know, I'm super confident now that by the time we come into September next year, I'll have between twelve and maybe twenty girls who are skillful now, but their skill, then their fundamental skill level will be will be off the charts. You know, and mm. and they then will. Like I said earlier, they'll they'll be able to. We'll be looking at them then to to bring it to mentor the the younger girls coming in, you know, because mm. they learn a lot more off each other than they do off us, you know. <laughs> if you, Which sort of like, kind of puts coaching into perspective, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does, you know. And going back, going back to when we had the seniors, you know, we had Sean Ed was my captain, Sean Ed Harris was my captain, and and I tell you what, she was one of the best coaches I one of the best coaches I had. She, you know, she wasn't a coach, she didn't have a coaching title, but but you know, when she got it, when she when when she said, yeah, okay, that's okay, then that was it. You know, she she would drive it for. You know, she would drive it forward for you. You know, and uh, and she would set the standard, mm. and that's what we what we. It's one of the things we miss, really. Like you know, is when the 18s used to come into the seniors. You know, have somebody like Shona there who 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 literally set the standard. You you know, she's such a good player. You know, such a driven play, uh, driven athlete. You know, but but such an open person as well. From a point of view of you know, she she would take somebody under the under a wing and and sort of like. Give them advice, and you know, um, and that's maybe one of the things we don't get. But even though we still go back to the girls and ask them, you know, can you can you come in and have a chat with the girls for us? So, you know, and it's sort of. And to be fair, every everyone I've asked, they've all come back in. You know, you know, it's sort mm-hmm. of. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, you sort of, yeah, like I say, as we go forward, we'll uh, yeah, we're gonna uh, constantly improve. Uh, yeah, but what what we'll have to do is the, the one thing we need to do is, is actually push it out there when the games are more. Yeah, you know, sort of like uh, we create with the team releases and everything like that. You know, we don't miss the team releases, but but sometimes it'd be better possibly if we actually get the fixture out there a couple of weeks before and build make make mm. build it up. So that the when the teams release, it's almost like oh yeah, you know, yeah, this is it. It's sort of, uh, mm. but yeah, no, no, all good. Well, we're going to do our best to uh, uh, to help with that because um, we oh, yeah. have started doing more oh, about that, and uh, yeah. we're starting to do a bit more on social media and kind of catching up. We're, we are playing a bit of catch up, and we were conscious of it from the start. But we, yeah. it's one of those things. So, yeah, we. we... I, I think we all are. I think we, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of like in a fortunate 
position that that like I say, you know, um you know, I go I can walk back to and nobody has a clue who I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and it's sort of like um but 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 like I say, you know, I'm 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 lucky I've I've done this for ten years, you know, mm-hmm. sort of um still enjoying it, which helps. <laughs> <laughs> Which Jeez, else, yeah. Have my moments, mind you. <laughs> have my moments <laughs> when I talk, throw my toys under the pram and say, that's it, I'm off. <laughs> that's about five minutes and then, oh, okay, let's go, yeah, let's get on with it. it. Yeah. Get back into it. But, um, but you know, and, and, and like I said, it, 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 it's about the girls, you know, it's about it's about giving them opportunities, you know, sort of mm-hmm. the easiest thing I could have done was go and coach a Division Three men's team, take 50 quid a week and Train once a week and the uh, job done, but uh, but I decided to take the hard road. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing a fine job, Darrell. You're doing a fine yeah, job. Well, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So on that note, then we shall wrap that one up. Thank you very much for your time today. Yeah, so no problem. We'll, problem. Uh, we shall do a, a bucket load more on our social media, and me yeah. and uh, and Martin will be talking about it uh, a load more. Certainly from next season. As everything yeah, yeah. starts to cook in. Well, any time you want to come down to a session or anything, if you and Martin want to come down, just let me know, and you can you can just just sort of come in, have a chat with some of the girls as well. See, now that sounds like a plan to me, mate. That sounds yeah, like yeah, a plan. Yeah, yeah. Any time you want to come down, just, just let us know, and uh, but then you have to come to one of the games. <laughs> I, as long as it's not an Astrid Monarch, I'm fine. No, 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 no. We'll find you a warm place. <laughs> we'll be bringing yeah. Bobby in at one point. <laughs> Darrell, thank you very much for your time today, my friend. We shall catch up again and uh, all the best for the future. All the best. Brilliant. Cheers, right. Thank See you. you Ta-da. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. You have been listening to the Westerer is Besterer podcast from the Scarlet Supporters PEMS team. You can follow us on Twitter on Scarlet PEMS, find us on Facebook with Scarlet Supporters Pembrokeshire, or email us on scarletspems at gmail.com. And remember, West is best, but Westerer is Besterer. Cheers. Podcast Network.